Hey guys, I'm here again. Uh, we're going to be doing the third intermediate algorithm scripting. By the way, I'm on feedcodecamp.org. And today, I want us to look at seek and destroy. So let's check this one out. Oh, this is my answer. Let me reset this real quick. All right, so let's read the directions. Seek and destroy. You will be provided with an initial array, the first argument in the destroyer function, followed by one or more arguments. Remove all elements from the initial array that are the same value as these arguments. Note, you have to use the arguments object. So let's copy this over to our editor. And let's review some of the important things. So for example, um, the first argument in the destroyer function, this one, will always be an array, followed by one or more arguments. So we could have two arguments like this one, we could have three arguments, like this one, or however many. Remove all the elements from the initial array that are the same value as these arguments. So for example, in this example, we want to remove two and three from this array. So the output should be, sorry about that, it should be one and one, because those are the ones that's not destroyed by these arguments here. All right, so I want us to, this question is a little bit weird because as our parameter here, we only have one parameter, but we're giving the function more than one parameter always. Here in this example, we're giving the destroyer function three parameters. First one is an array, second one is two, and third one is three. But notice here, the way they have set up the function, we only have access to this R. So let me just console log this to show you guys what this is. If I run this, notice here, we console logged it and we get back this array here. So how do we access this two and three? Traditionally, you would do that by maybe introducing variables like this and then accessing them like this. So, however, we can't do that here because they have intentionally set up the pro, uh, the function so that we only have the first parameter like so. And that is why they're telling us on this note to use the arguments object. So arguments is a keyword in JavaScript. Uh, it comes built in with JavaScript. Now, let me just console log what arguments is uh, to show you guys. Console log arguments. Make sure you have an S at the end. And this is what we get. We get this weird object here where it's a key value pair. First one, zero, and we get this, one, two, and three. So we get an object back with the values as uh, the actual parameter itself and the keys as the index, what order they are. All right. So for example, if I wanted to access two, I would just do arguments want index. If I wanted to access this letter three, I would just do two and so on. Now, the thing is, we don't know how many uh, parameters, how many destroyer numbers that they're going to give us. It could be one, it could be two, it could be three, or it could be a hundred. So what we're going to do is let's make an array of all the destroying numbers, destroying elements, for example, two and three here, or two, three, five here. Let's get all of them, excluding this array. Let's just get these guys and put them in an array. So how will we do that? Let's first make an array out of this whole thing. So what I'm trying to do right now is I want to make an array that has all the arguments. So for example, we will have one, two, three, one, two, three. This is the first array as the zero index, and then we will have two, and then we will have three. This is what I'm trying to make here. Uh, so the way that we will do that, there's more than one ways to do that, but let's de first define a variable. I'm going to call this the args array. And what I will do in order to get this array from this arguments object is we could either do array that from uh, not R, but the arguments keyword 
and let's console log what that is. So notice I get back what I wanted here. So we are making from our arguments keyword object, we're making an array of all the values. Another way to do it is, this is a little bit wordy here. See, it's array that from. Another way to do it is just put a, an array bracket and spread, uh, not the R, spread the arguments keyword. Here is another way to do it. And let me show you guys. Bam. We get another array like. So this is what I prefer. This is called spreading. It's a spread operator here, the triple dots. Basically, we just we're just uh, separating all the arguments with commas. That's what this does. And now, now that we have this, I just want these guys. I want to exclude the first, the zero element. And I just want to have these guys here, either two, three or two, three, five or so on. And how I am going to do that is I am going to use the slice method. So let me guys show you guys the slice method. Uh, array the slice JavaScript. Let's go over that real quick. Sorry if you guys already know this. So what slice does is returns a copy of a new array with selected from a begin to end, where begin and end represents an index of items in the array. So for example, if we have this animals and we slice to two, the first parameter will always be the begin number, the begin index, so zero, one, two, so we will have from here on. If we don't have a second parameter, we just go to the end. If we do provide a second parameter, we go up to that index. So which one is four? Zero, one, two, three, four. So we're excluding this one, starting from two, zero, one, two, and only have these two, like you can see here. However, we want to exclude the first one, meaning we want to start at the one index and go all the way to the end. So we don't need a second parameter. Now let's console log that and see, yep, we get what we want here. So that's good. Now that we have the array of all the other arguments, all of our destroyer elements. Maybe I should rename this. No, but I'll just keep it like this. Now we want to loop through our array here, which is also provided in this array parameter. And I want to remove all elements from the initial array that are of the same values as these arguments here, args array. So let's loop through our parameter. I'm going to first define a variable called filtered array. And essentially, let me first do that first, filtered r. Essentially, this, after looping through this array, will contain all the filtered elements, meaning we want to remove from this r variable, we want to remove all of our elements that's contained within the args array. In our example, it would be two comma three. So we want to remove two and three from this. So we will start it off as empty array and we will fill it up if it's not included in this array. So let's do a for loop for rr for let i is zero. Sorry about that. Let i is zero. i is less than r dot length i plus plus. And what we're doing is we're going through each index and we're checking to see if they are included in this array or not. So if args are, args are includes our current element of our index, how we access that is just r of i. If it includes it, that means we want to destroy it, meaning if uh, if this guy includes the current element that we're looping over, <clears throat> we don't want it to add it to this filtered array. So if this is the case, whoops. If this is the case, we want to do nothing. However, if we don't include it, if it doesn't include it, then we want to add it to our filtered array. And how we do that is just filtered array that push of our current element like so. 
And once this loop finish, we should have all the filtered elements within this variable here. So all we have left to do is return filtered array. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to console log the output of this, hoping that I get one comma one, because those are the only elements that's not contained there. Yep, and we get one one here. And if we were to put one here, then we should get an empty array back, which we do here. So that's good. All right, so let's do some refactoring. Um, this is one way to do it. Um, this is the traditional for loop. However, in my opinion, it's not as clean as it needs to be. For example, I don't like accessing our L current element that we're looping over by doing this R uh, I index. So another way to do this is to use the for of loop. And the way that we do that is we say const the current element that we're looping over of our array. And instead of doing ri here, we could just write l. And that essentially does the same thing. Let's see if that works, one, one. So that's good. In my opinion, this is much cleaner. Um, it's more easier to read too, in my opinion. Now, another thing we could do is use one of, uh, notice that I'm calling this the filtered array. Now, JavaScript has a built-in array method called the filter method. And we could actually use that here. So we could get rid of this loop entirely and build a filter array up by using the filter method. Let me guys show you guys that here. So let me uh, comment this out. And we will essentially do const filtered array is equal to our array. And this is what we want to filter. Now, what goes inside here is a function where the for the parameters, the first parameter is going to be the element that we're looping over, kind of like this guy here. And the result of this, the result of this inner function is either going to be true or false. If it's true, then it's contained, it goes into this filtered array. If it's false, it's, it's filtered out. So we're going to do, we're going to do this. If the, um, Sorry about that. If the args array includes L, so if it includes it, do we want to filter it? Yes, we want to filter it out. So we want to only take the ones where it's not in there. So if it's not in there, this will become this whole uh, thing will become true. Let's see if that works. And yep, we get one one here again. So in my opinion, this is much easier to read than the for loop. Uh, notice I have a yellow squiggy line here. So that's WebStorm telling me that this is redundant and it is. Notice we are declaring this variable here and then returning it right after. So one, we, one thing we could do is, let's see what this inline variable does. We could just return the whole method too. So that's a much concise way to do it. Let me guys show you what WebStorm just did for me. Essentially what he did was he grabbed this pasted it to the return and we remove this one. So that is a much concise way to do it. Now, if you want to be even more concise, although I don't really recommend this, notice where we're using this args array. We're just using it here. And args array is the same thing as this whole thing. So just grab this guy here and paste it here. There, we solved it with one line of code and we get back the correct answer. So let's submit this one. Run the test. There we go. All right, one last thing that I want to show you guys. Uh, so this is a bit of a technical thing, and it's actually a problem that I ran into when I was trying to solve this. So I personally don't like the old function notation. I like the new arrow syntax. So what I did, was I used const destroyer and I defined this as an error function like so. And the one thing good about error function is I don't need to have this return if it's one line like this, but I'll just ignore that for now. Now, if we do an error notation like so, it's actually not going to work. So let's see what this console log becomes. 
and I get back this, which is not what I want. And there is a reason for this. Let me console log with side this historical function what arguments keyword is. We get back this pretty nasty. I don't know if this is an object. Yeah, I, I believe it's an object. But essentially, we don't get back the arguments uh, object that we got back before with our traditional function notation. So after doing some digging, arrow functions don't actually use this arguments keyword. They don't want you to do this. Uh, what they want you to do is something like this. If you want to have access to all the arguments, you would have to change this parameter, put a destructure, uh, not destructure, uh, spread operator, and just write it as R or any other variable name that you want. Now, if you console log this args keyword, I get an error. R is not defined, or it's because this doesn't exist anymore. So let me just comment out that line and let's console out this. See, now we get back the parameter, the array of parameters that we want. So if we do it like this, and this key, uh, this variable name could be anything. So we could just do ABC if you want. Essentially, uh, ABC becomes an array of all the parameters that we're giving our function. So if we were to put uh, hello here as our fourth parameter, then we will see hello here. So here's a small caveat about error functions. Uh, we can't use the arguments keyword in an error function. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me again on part three of free code camp JavaScript algorithms, seek and destroy. Uh, again, I'll be releasing these videos every single day until I get through all of these. And please, uh, I just started out my YouTube channel uh, about a week, less than a week ago. And uh, I've been getting a lot of positive feedback. So if you guys want me to do something, make some tutorial videos on some subject or some question, please let me know below. And if you like my content, please subscribe. I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Have a good day.